Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk to you about rentals in Vilcabamba. And we want to talk a little bit about the kind of help you need here. We want to make sure you get a good start and have some good direction from people who are going to give you the right story. Before we go any farther, I asked that you check, make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube sometimes unsubscribes you. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification bell. That way you'll know uh, you're going to, when our next video comes out. So I'm going to introduce you to these young ladies here that are going to give you a professional, a great quality experience here in Ecuador. They are the pros when it comes to rental. And I think that you can't go wrong with these ladies. So without further ado, let's go to the video. It's Joe with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here again with my good friend, Aura. Aura, thank you for having Thanks. me. Thanks. Thanks for the invitation. Bless you. Aura has a business here called The Happy Office, and this is a happy place. She's got a couple partners, and um, this is an excellent place. So she's doing rentals here, of course. You remember our first video on rentals with Aura? And uh, so there were a lot of questions about rentals then. A lot of people yes. viewed that video, actually. Yeah. So we're going to ask some more questions from Aura today, see if we can stump her. <laughs> Yes. See if we can get her confused. <laughs> I'm here to help you guys, so go ahead with your questions. That's awesome. She said, bring it on. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the first question I have is, um, and several people have asked me this even recently on our YouTube channel, do you think rental prices in Vilcabamba are too high? Well, I actually consider the Vilcabamba, well, we all know here that we live here. It's, it's a beautiful place, touristic place. And it's a really, how to say, it's, a top, it's in the top list, even from Lojanos, from other people that are local Ecuadorians that come here. So the, how, the prices are, are fine, are fine. You know, compare, in comparison with the Loja prices, it may be a little bit higher because of the weather. They're facts, you know, they're facts. The weather, the climate here is beautiful. We have very fresh, clean water. So prices, prices are fine, yeah, are okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they have gone up a little bit in the last, since we, we came here almost six years ago. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Every year, there's Good. always, sorry, there is also, you know, the salary, the way salary grows up, everything increases, so rents also, just a yeah. little bit, you know, it's not a big increase, depending on the, uh, also on the accommodations that they do, because some of them do improve, so depending. I think we have seen an increase, you know, some inflation here that wasn't here when we first got here. And, and that's attributed to a lot of things. But I mean, when you consider inflation throughout the world, Ecuador has done a marvelous job at keeping it pretty low. So, um, yeah, the prices, I think, are probably a little bit higher than they were, but it's not astronomically higher. You have to consider that this is a tourist community in a way. Yes. You know, anytime you look in a tourist town, prices are going to be a little bit more. A little bit higher. But yeah. And bad. again, the climate, you know, everything that people want to come to Vilcabamba for. Because we have the perfect, the perfect weather. The it's a paradise. Weather. It's a paradise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. And the Lojanos, you know, the people who live in Loja that uh, want to come here on the weekends, you know, that, that of course, you know, brings a lot of um, uh, money into the community. And uh, that's important here. But yes. again, they like to rent things here just like we do. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit of competition for it. So, I mean, you kind of covered my next question a little bit. Are prices higher here than they are in Loja? Depending on the section, you know, Loja is also beautiful, beautiful neighborhoods where you find beautiful homes, like the best finishes. So those houses are higher, of course, from the ones that are not right in the city. It happens the same here in Vilcabamba you can find good rentals for very good prices in, in the center uh, and also in outside the center a little bit maybe less or higher depending because if you stay in the center also it's a little bit noisy so you have to take into account those facts so that's why a lot of people like to to live not really close to the center and sometimes they pay a little bit more because they're able to have a garden and it's bigger space you know yeah. So depending on the, on the neighborhood too. So some people have asked, you know, about um, dealing with, with real estate owners here and rentals. 
Um, what can people be evicted for? If they rent a home here, they rent an apartment, what can they get kicked out for? Oh, okay. They can get kicked out of the place they rent if they are not doing what they, they sign in the contract. You can get a place if you are gonna use it as your home. You know, you, you'll take care of your home. You'll, you'll take care of your gardens, everything. But if, if you are actually broken the contract, you're bringing in more people, so that's, subletting, yes, yeah. or subletting the place or turning into a different thing that it's not a home anymore. So those things that are, are not in the contract, and if you're broken the place, you know, the landlord won't let you stay there. He will ask you to, to leave immediately, depending on how bad the situation is, especially if you're breaking the place. Yeah. So, so um, if they don't pay the rent, they can yes. be evicted for non-payment. Yes. Anything that so breaks the contract. Yeah. And contracts normally also um, tell you that if you, are not, if you don't pay your month uh, rent and you go on and on without paying, no, no one is going to wait for you more than 90 days, for example. So then they would ask you to, to please leave. And yeah, sometimes landlords are a little patient or <laughs> no yeah. patience at all. Yeah. I'm a tough landlord. <laughs> so um, this comes up a lot. I hear it in discussions everywhere. Can the landlord keep your deposit? Depending. For example, um, depending how, how the place is, uh, they can give it back in the full amount or they, they would just go through with you through the staff and if there is anything missing or broken, if the house needs to be painted again because they deliver the place like normally, um, some, of the, some of the landlords really like to deliver the place really clean, the walls really clean everything. So if the house is not like that, they would keep part of the contract, uh, part of the deposit because they need to pay somebody else, you know, to help you with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I always like to work with honest people, you know, people that we know that are serious and would give you your deposit back. So you are, it's, it's a safe thing to give deposits. And also it's good to know who you are dealing with. Yeah, but most of the time you get your deposits back, yeah. So if it's a landlord that's notorious for keeping deposits out, it's probably not gonna show you anything that they have uh, for rent. <laughs> Or she'll give you the option. Yes. <laughs> so I, I would think it'd be a really good idea to videotape the house or apartment before you move in. See, exactly. That's a really good suggestion. Uh, we have to go. You have to go through the whole things. You know, all the all the things that are in the house. Uh, so like, it's good to do this with the landlords, so they know what they are living in the house, in what situations, in what in what conditions. And you can make your own list. We help, or we can help you with the inventory list also. So you are safe. Even take pictures or videos about things, even little things that you think can be a problem at the end. So it's good. So that both parts are aware of. Yeah. yeah. And my suggestion too is, if there's something that you really want, um, you need to probably get that done before you sign a contract and move in. Um, for example, security bars, things like that. Yes. Um, you, you'll probably be a lot more successful if you ask beforehand. Yeah, exactly. So it depends on how good the, the landlord is, you know, I'm flexible. Some of them would say, oh, you can prepay part of the part of your rent and they can work in this. And so it depends on how the agreement is done. But some of them would just do it without you prepaying the, mon the money. So it's between the rent. Yeah, and it's good what Joe says. It's better to be safe before you move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if, if you go to your landlord, you're already renting there, and you ask them to improve something on the property, the house, apartment, whatever it might be, um, and that you would use your money you need to have a pretty firm understanding with the landlord about that. Yeah, you always need to ask them permission in order to do this. Some of them would be so happy that you improve their properties or some would, would, wouldn't like that, actually. So, yeah, tenants here, I mean, landlords are really flexible here. And why not to help them? <laughs> yeah. So what is the typical term of a rental here? A typical How term. long? 
Uh, well, in my, based on my experience, I know that landlords, they really like to keep a, a minimum of six month lease. Yes, up to a year, two years. Yes. So a year, even two years. Yeah, it's, I've had clients asking me to help them find places for one month or two months, and it's been a little bit difficult talk for me because, you know, I know, I know a lot of people, and I ask them, can, can we have uh, some clients come for a month? And they say, no, 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 no. It's like they don't really like it, especially yeah. when they bring uh, pets and things like that, you know? It's, yeah. it's a little bit hard. It's a little bit hard to find a place for a month. It is. I, we managed to, six years ago when we came here, do a month to month, but there was the only one available. Um, yeah, it was, it was, we just got very lucky. <laughs> I have rented our casita on a month to month just so um, I get to see if I really like the people or not. Oh, see, um, see. Our houses are so close on our property that we want to be sure we have the right person in yeah. there. And the month to month helps me Glad. feel them out and see how they're going to be. So if at the end of the month I don't like them, <laughs> how'd you go? Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But few people are going to do what I do. I mean, I had a very special situation. So, so um, is it is it hard to find uh, rentals that are pet friendly, like well, except dogs and cats? Yeah, it depends. It depends. Um, yeah, all this time I've I've had a lot of clients look in a place, big places, like with a lot of space for their pets and. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find because all the good places are already taken. <laughs> so we have to do the search. We have uh, options, not only Vilcabamba, but Malacatos, a few in Quinara, in Ghana. Yeah, and depending if they're not really in town, they can find places with pets. Let's say it's maybe 80% pet friendly, 20%, especially in apartments. Apartments, they don't like cats, they don't like dogs. So it's like, Sometimes you really have to convince a landlord to let you bring a little pet, uh, dog, cat. <laughs> so yeah. that houses with gardens, yeah, it's fine, pet friendly. And I think if you're already living there and under contract, and the contract says no pets, you're gonna have to yes. figure out how to make that happen. Yes. Yeah. Even if you have a pet, and the lady says, "Yeah, you can bring your cat or your dog," you mm -hmm. can add that in the contract. An addendum. Yes. Yeah. So then. You are not bothered. You're not bothered by asking the dog to leave or something, you know. So, so when a renter does a contract with a landlord, um, does that contract get filed somewhere, or what happens with that contract? Does it go to the notary, or? Yeah. Well, if you want the contract to be 100% official, like let's say official, because you you want a signature from the notary, yes, you can bring your contract to the notary here in Malacatos, which is 15 minutes away. And I think they charge you a 10% from what the rent value says in the contract. Uh, so yeah. if it's 600 a month, they're gonna charge you $60. 60, yeah, yeah, it's like about a 10%. Mm. Yeah, and most of the time landlords do that, uh, or they would ask you to do it. So it depends, it's between agreements. It's, it's not like you as a tenant have the responsibility to have your contract done. Actually, it's something that landlord would ask you so mm -hmm. depending if you want to cover the fee it's fine with it's fine no, no problem yeah you might want to do that that might be if you an extra really, safety yeah. Yeah. measure so our um the rentals here at the happy office how is it only in vilcabamba or do you cover other towns no we go we go farther yeah vilcabamba malacatos we have beautiful houses in malacatos like with pool Jacuzzis, beautiful houses there. Uh, Kinara also a few houses, Yangana, a couple houses there, but we go farther. Vilcabamba, you know, around town. All the little yeah. um, pueblos around si, Vilcabamba. Si. Mm -hmm. Very good. So Malacatos, Canara, Vilcabamba. Yeah, we Just were trying to available. make our list grow a little bit. <laughs> yeah. How is the inventory right now in, in this area? Is, is, there, is there lots of rentals or not too many? Uh, well, right now, not too many actually mm -hmm. yeah uh, I've I've seen a lot of houses being available on people and people calling me you know to help them find rentals but sometimes they're not a good fit for the clients I have here right now so it, it's always like this so it's a game sometimes yeah, yeah but now there are a few in the inventory that we have available and we hope more and more come up <laughs> yeah 
So I understand that some people from, um, from other countries are, are asking if you can rent something for them before they get here. Yes, in fact, I've, I've had some clients that have asked that already, but um, you know, according to the experience I have, it's, it's much better that you come here in person and get the feel about the places or in which neighborhood you want to be, know a little bit about town, the culture. Uh, because, you know, it's good to not have surprises. Like if I find a place for you that you like in a video or in a picture, and when you come here, you don't really like it or it's not what you expect, and then you already pay or prepay, so then it's, it's really hard to get that money back to you. And it's not something that we can actually help with getting money back because the landlord would already keep that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so like break, it's like you're breaking a contract. So yeah, it's much better and I suggest you uh, come here in person. Yeah. And stay in a hotel yeah. for a couple of days or a week until you find the right person the right place. Yeah. Well that's what we wanna do, help. <laughs> so I always recommend an exploratory visit to come yes. here, see the areas, kinda at least have an understanding of the area the that culture. you're thinking about renting in. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, I always say 15 minutes in any direction is a whole different climate yes. here, different neighborhoods. You may get into a neighborhood you don't particularly care for. Exactly, exactly. And there's always things that come up. Sometimes you can find a, a nice neighborhood, but it happens that during night it's really loud with dogs. <laughs> so there's a lot of people sensitive to dogs barking around, you know, things like that. Other people do not really care about it, but uh, it's always good to ask you know, is there a lot of noise about you know, around like dogs or how do you say roosters? Roosters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what? Uh, here in Mikabamba, dogs are really part of the culture. <laughs> so I everywhere you go, you'll find at least a couple of dogs in your neighborhood <laughs> or even yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not into the dog barking of roosters, you probably don't want to live in Mikabamba. <laughs> or maybe yeah. far in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, far away. Yeah. So, Aura, can you help uh, people who want to rent commercial spaces? Yes, I've had requests about that. Uh, it's, it's, it was a little bit difficult to help people find those commercial spaces that they were looking at that time. We've helped other people find like offices, offices, and it's, yeah. Very good. See. Very good. Um, so a landlord here, um, can they raise the rent on you at any time or? Mm, not really. It wouldn't be you know part. It's not going to be part of the contract. It, I think they would be breaking the contract if the contract already says that you are signed for a whole year or six months with that amount and she comes or he comes and says, hey, we're going to increase. It doesn't really look nice, not really honest, but depending on what circumstances you can manage it, you know. So it's always good to to, to get to meet your landlord too. Yes. Yeah, but it, it's, I, it's not really correct to, to increase it in the middle of your contract. Yeah. So you have to, she or he would have to wait the whole year, the period of the contract to rent and also let you know a few months before that next year is going to be more. So you decide if you want to keep it or if you just want to leave and find another place. Yeah. And there's some laws here about how much they can raise the rent. Yeah, but I'm not really sure about the percentages, but it's, yeah, it's they it's, cannot go extremely too high. Yeah, it's yeah, certainly it's not more than 10%. I know see. that, um, definitely. So out of, um, uh, we get this question a lot on our channel. Um, can you get high-speed internet in these rentals? Claro que sí, of course. Of course, depending on which provider you, you are using, you just connect with them and they can show you the plans. And I know uh, the provider that we work with, they have really good speeds, I mean plans, depending on the plan. You, I think the basic is 20 or $25 plus tax, then you go up. Uh, I think it was 100 megabytes per, per second. You pay 25, 28 for that. And then you can go up to 100 or even more mm -hmm. uh, speed. I mean, not 100, I think it's, um, well, the, the highest one, it's yeah. like $70 or something like that. But I'm not, I don't yeah. remember the, the speed I, amount. Yeah, I don't think you really need the highest one no, because no, no. I, I found with the lower ones, I get yeah. really good speed. I That's mean, what if, we use if, here. I, if I do a speed test, it's pretty impressive. People back in the U.S. always go, what? You know, you're paying 20 bucks for that? And that's amazing. Yes. So, and I will say, if you're over 65, there's a discount on your, um, on your, your internet. But some of these places come with internet, yeah? 
Sí, 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 ya. Yeah. Depending how the landlord wants to set it up, they would include you the place with all the services already, or you would have to pay it on top. Yeah. Like, let's say an example, 300 plus utilities, then it would be maybe for water, electricity, and internet, maybe around $60 extra, probably 50, 60. -ish. So you would end paying 30, 350, let's say an example. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some friends who have a rental here in town and they provide the internet, but I will warn you that it is Wi-Fi. And so that's what it's always going to be is Wi-Fi. So if you are a digital nomad, and by the way, um, Ecuador does have a digital nomad visa. So that is available now. Didn't used to be when we were here, but it is now. And you can get really good internet speeds here. That's available in a lot of the yes. rentals. Some of them already have it. Some don't. Um, you may have to pay to get a little bit higher speed if that's what you want to do. Yes. That's available to do here. Yes. Typically, the internet contracts are one year. Mm -hmm. uh, like with Bilkinet, I think it's one year. You can have it for, uh, for six months, too. You can do it yeah, six months? Okay, yeah. yeah. Discount if you're over 65. If you're youngin, you don't get a discount. <laughs> um, but it is available here. So our uh, business here, again, is called The Happy Office. And we'll have her contact information in the description box below this video. So you can reach out to them by email or by telephone. WhatsApp's usually preferred. If you have the WhatsApp uh, application, that's really easy to download for free. And everyone here uses WhatsApp. Yes. So that's just the best way to communicate. You can make free phone calls here to Outer if you use WhatsApp. And so uh, there won't be a charge for it. They're here to help you any way they can. Yes, yes. Uh, Erica and I, Erica is my partner work with the rental, so Erica and I are more than happy to help you. <laughs> they both speak impeccable English and Spanish, and if you don't speak Spanish, Aura can teach you. Yes. <laughs> okay, Aura, thank you so much for having us thank today. You Bless so you. Thank you so much again. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. All right, thumbs up. Ciao for now. Thanks.